NSFW, Redditors who lived in secluded towns, what's the darkest thing that has ever happened in your town that everyone knew about but never talked about? One of the elementary school teachers was molesting kids. He went on a Wednesday night in March hunting trip with a bunch of the kids' dads. There was a terrible accident. And the teacher did not survive. The mandatory sheriff's investigation found no sign of foul play. My dad getting arrested for child abuse was the giant scandal. Pretty much everyone was supportive for the most part. Which I don't hear a lot of for small towns. Landlord went easy on my brother for rent until he got situated. People would periodically bring food to check on us. And it never felt like gossip reckon. About 9 years ago. A guy lost his job at a nearby Kaiser so he killed his 5 children and wife and then turned the gun on himself. Before he shot himself he faxed a letter to a news station explaining that the tough economic times we were living in left him no other choice and also apparently indicated that he and his wife had agreed to this murder suicide pact weeks before it happened. They had pulled their older children out of school and everything. I used to live in remote Australia. A body of a girl about 17-18 turned up in the middle of nowhere. I mean nowhere. The nearest house was 40 kms away. The road was red dirt. Some drovers found her nearly decomposed. No one knows who she is. No one knows where she came from. The only theory they have is that a river flooded and brought her down from Darwin and she's more than likely an international tourist. We don't talk about it because there is literally no town. And no one in it to talk about it to. Family up the road from me seemed like nice people always friendly. Owned a business within the area everyone knew them. But they all seemed kind of off or strange. I don't want to use the term but it was apparent they were all a variation of slow to a degree. One day news broke that the father had been sexually molesting his two daughters I think 17 and 13 for god knows how long. Guy was never formally convicted due to lack of evidence so he remains an outsider now to the town. I believe his kids were sent to CPS immediately. In my hometown there was a girl who hid her pregnancy from everyone. She gave birth in her family home while everyone was out but hemorrhage and fainted. Her dad found her and took her to hospital where they proceeded to ask him where the baby was. He didn't know she was pregnant but went back to the house to find the baby. He found the baby in a bucket in the cupboard. She had stabbed it multiple times with manicure scissors. She claimed it was dead on delivery but the autopsy proved otherwise. She was arrested and spent a few months in a mental institution before being released back to my hometown. Two terrible things occurred. A very popular boy hung himself from a swing set in a town park. He was 17. At that time there had been a couple suicides of young boys in our area. But this one really took people by surprise. Funeral was terrible. He had one older brother and a sister. About 3 or 4 years later the older brother hung himself at the same place on the anniversary of his brother's suicide. Terrible. My friend's 21 years old sister was murdered in her house on Christmas. Came home from celebrating with family to find someone robbing her house. He beat and murdered her with a baseball bat. Ended up to be a kid she went to HS with. He ended up killing himself in jail. It's been 10 years and it's still difficult to talk about. The cleaner at my old primary school hung himself right in the middle of the hall where all the assemblies and such took place. Needless to say school was cancelled for a few days. Woman shot the guy that molested her son. In the middle of the courtroom. Movie was made about it. Even bumped into the woman at the store a few times. I've never heard anyone mention it other than the paper occasionally. So this guy's girlfriend found out that he was going back to his home country to get married. She goes into a fit of rage and ends up murdering him. Loads his body into a blender. Cooks up a meal and serves it to construction workers and fed the remains to neighborhood dogs. Dead guy's brother is concerned so visits girlfriend and finds a tooth in the blender and suspects a murder thus alerting the police. She was arrested. A decently popular Chinese restaurant in town had one of the owner's babies walk out the back door and disappear. It was ducking heartbreaking. The parents on TV and all in the, the paper. There was a big search effort. Eventually they found the baby's body stuffed into one of the cabinets at the restaurant. Pretty sure the place is still open. The mother had beaten the baby to death. I looked into it serving 22 years then being deported. The place is closed. 
The town pastor was allegedly touching the altar children both boys and girls. It was ducked up because apparently some of the kids told their parents about it but the parents either didn't believe them or didn't care enough to stop this from happening. So this went on for a while and less and less people went to church except for the hardcore devotees which were usually the parents of the children. So until those kids grew up they were forced to be sexually abused by their parents and no adult did anything about it and I believe the same pastor is still there to this day. When I was a kid in the west of Ireland there was a guy in his 20s who used to cycle past our school at the same time every morning. No. This isn't going the direction you think it's going. The story I was told was that this young man as a teenager had been an only child living on a small isolated farm with his widowed mother. He was 18 and he was basically running the farm on his own. One day the guy snapped and beat his mother over the head with a blunt instrument and killed her. The people of the small village he lived in felt sorry for the boy. They thought he was a good kid. They felt that the mother had been an ogre who had made his life hell and what happened was very much out of character. So the murder was covered up on condition. The local priest stipulated that the boy cycled about 15 miles every morning to a very well-known Marian shrine and said an act of contrition for what he had done. Not in my city but in my family. My great uncle Norm was a Vietnam veteran and he brought home a sweet Vietnamese wife. They were very happy for some time. He taught her English and she was very crafty. They had two sons that he loved very much. When the sons got older she became jealous of how much time he spent with them and how much he loved them. She became mean and resentful. Spiteful. He started finding old meat and bugs in his lunches. And when he started bringing his own lunches she would stalk him at work and try to give him lunches she made. She started ripping apart the house for him to come home and clean up. And didn't feed her sons even though she was the housewife. He filed for divorce. And when he left for work after handing her the papers she stabbed her sons to death. Doused their bodies and herself in rubbing alcohol. And lit herself on fire. He was absolutely devastated. As a kid I wondered why he was such a zombie. And when I got older my father told me what happened to him. I would probably be an emotional husk too. Not secluded but I live in a small town. The owner of the pizza shop down the street from me shot himself in the head a couple of years ago. In broad daylight. Behind the shop. Nobody talks about that. Someone got murdered in this secluded rundown bar a few minutes down the round and their body was dumped in the lake. Despite everyone usually knowing everything and everybody. Nobody would speak of it. Local business owner killed his 18 year old daughter and her stepmom with a hammer then hung himself. No one ever found out why. Another local man down the road shot his family. Dogs and horses. Lit the house on fire then shot himself. Had a high school teacher who was a little too friendly with the girls in high school and students had complained about it for years to finally took the police stalking his house out to reveal that he had affair with a 17 year old girl that was going on for a while. He was married and had two kids while this was going on. Here is the story. In the small town I live in in northern NB. Two small boys were strangled in their sleep by a snake. The man who owned the reptile store had an undocumented python upstairs that was about 6 feet. His kids spent the night and it had gotten out of its enclosure, which was way too small and not secured properly. I don't remember what happened to him. If you want to know more look up Reptile Ocean Campbellton. There was a serial killer that came through town and killed a few people. One of the victims was laid out on the shore of the lake in front of their house after the guy had killed them. That plot of land has been basically cursed. Every time someone would go to buy it the deal would either fall through or they'd start building and run out of money. Someone finally built a really nice house on the plot. Waiting to see if it lasts. Edit. It was the guy that killed Gianni Versace. A guy living here was pretty well known in our community. Just because he socialized with everyone a lot. Anyway sadly he was suicidal. He went up to the moor and shot himself with a shotgun. Now, we have two police officers in our village, and he was friends with them, so he put sticky notes all over his house and some of them demanded that those officers were to not attend the scene. Some police from the nearest town were looking for his location, but didn't know the area, so they called the police from my village to show them where it may be. They hadn't been told what they were going to, so when they arrived and saw their dead friend, well I can't imagine it being a horrible sight suicides 
mostly from non-local people. My town and surrounding area was, and to a point still is, a well-known area to hang oneself. Sometimes people would also commit suicide by either crashing their car or gassing themselves in their car. Town I grew up in there was a noisy house party late at night. A neighbor goes over to ask them to tone it down. A scuffle ensues. Some guy kicks the it out of him so bad he dies. There were dozens of witnesses but for years there was a conspiracy of silence. It took 5 years for the truth to come out. A friend of mine was seeing the local pastor for marriage counseling to try and save her marriage. A few months later the pastor up and moved without notice. The whole town was abuzz with gossip. Turns out she was sleeping with the pastor. And when his wife found out he had to move to save his marriage. May we live in interesting times. Used to live in a small town in the middle of nowhere in Western Australia. The town itself had a lot of weird things going on. But a house up the road from mine went up in flames. Turns out that house was a meth lab. All the remains of the house were still there last time I went there. Edit. For everyone asking what town it was. It was an Esperance. Small village in England. A guy was being evicted from his home as he couldn't afford to keep up the payments. He was mentally unstable. There was a big standoff between him and the fire police men as he was threatening to burn himself alive in the house. I think it ended in him trying to light himself on fire and failed then someone snuck in through the back door and tackled him to the ground. Edit. A word. During the Korean War the North Korean People's Army were getting closer to my town. The government forces rounded up hundreds of people they suspected of being communist or communist sympathizers took them a little out of town and executed them. I had no idea this happened and it's never talked about. Oddly enough our part in the Korean War is celebrated because the North Koreans advance was stopped at our town. My town had a naughty boys school called Boys Town. Yes Aussies the lottery mob. This was a boys only boarding school run by priests and brothers. The kids there were either too naughty for mainstream public schooling, and the local catholic school, or kids from the system with no families. The school holds Australia's top position for most claims of sexual assault against a church organization. Every one of those claims of the underage variety. The school has been shut since 2004 and was recently demolished. Local business owners won't touch the land. Local churchgoers refuse to talk about it and get angry if you do. Local aboriginal elders have refused opportunity to use the area for cultural events because it's now bad soil. Developers have recently bought it and will put larger businesses in that land and you can bet your bottom dollar most long time locals won't even go there to shop. Not necessarily dark. Mostly just weird but we had a guy who got busted ducking the ducks he had on his farm. My small town in Pembrokeshire, Wales was frequently used to dump pedophiles, gang members, and other troubled people from across the UK. Didn't know about this until I had left, always wondered why it was flooded with heroin. A pregnant lady was murdered by C4 explosives. In 2006, a 28YO Mongolian model and translator, Alton Chuaya Shari Ibu was murdered by military grade C4 or was believed to have been shot dead before her body was blown up with explosives at a secluded area near the Subang Dam, few minutes drive from my house. One of Malaysia's most sensational murder cases. Edited, summary to her murder case. My friend's mother was super religious. One of her daughters was gay and she was vehemently against it. Sometimes going a bit off the rails. Anyway, a few years later, this mother started having an affair with the local female priest. We all know about this, but nobody ever talks about it out of respect. My friend's father is a bit of a pillar and all of his children are lovely. What a twist the way. When I was around 12, a local boy, who actually lived across the street from me, was accidentally shot by his best friend. Apparently they had took the guns out of the house when they weren't allowed to, and were shooting rattlesnakes in the ditch. However, one bullet ricocheted off a tree and hit the boy point blank in the face. He hung on for about a week before they took him off life support. However, I did hear my parents say years later that it might not have been an accident. Which doesn't really make sense to me because the boys were around 11 years old at the time. I know people have murdered other people at younger ages. It just seems unlikely to me that that happened. 
there was a giant monster who used to kidnap and abuse children, and is now infamous internationally for his crimes. This man used to live near my town, where he abducted several children and teenage girls. He used to hide some of his victims in his cellar during their captivity. Some of the girls used pencils and sheets of paper to document their time in captivity. It is an atrocious read because of how graphic it is presumably. Nobody speaks about him and his victims due to how horrendous the circumstances are, especially considering how he lives so close to the community. I even used to play on the same street where he buried several of his victims. Edit. Rewrote by kind person as English is not my native language. I actually have a good one finally. North Idaho. Town of 300-400. This guy Robert would ride around town on his four-wheeler with his schnauzer until one day he was just gone. His buddy Greg had his dog and spent a couple of weeks trying to get it back to him. But we all assumed he had just left. A year and a half later there was a party and this dude was talking about how he had killed somebody trying to impress this lady. She doesn't buy it and shrugs him off. Dude comes back 3 hours later with a severed foot. Turns out. No joke. This is hillbilly country. Robert was shot in an alcohol and meth fuel game of cards out at their house so they wrapped him in tarp and buried him out back. Sounds like juicy gossip right? But these guys were friends with the police and powerful people. It was an accident and the three guys involved were all out under 5 years later. There's just not much to say. No reason to talk about it. Greg still takes that dog with him everywhere he goes. A guy killed his three dogs. His pregnant wife. His 13 month year old baby and then killed himself. One of my best friends was quartered. Put through a meat grinder and buried in the friend locations on a coyote preserved by her much older boyfriend. I took flowers to her parents and they slammed the door in my face and I like the piece of it is out on parole now. My wife grew up very near Noble GA, unincorporated, where the Tree State Crematory event came to light in 2002. The incinerator broke and the operator apparently was just tossing bodies in the backyard, kind of junkyard, in cars, under lawn clippings, partly buried, in between trees, etc. The town found out because multiple dogs brought home body parts. I lived on a farm in North Carolina a girl was found on our property like at the far edge of the property line, in the literal middle of the forest, never found matching DNA won her parts from being sexually assaulted, I was like 5 but I remember this vividly along with my whole time there, I heard whispers and even heard her identity was found but I was always too young to actually be told what it was. Back in the day, before my time, IDK, something like the 70s or 80s. The local high school principal had a relationship with his underage student. He ended up leaving his wife and marrying the girl as soon as it was legal to do so. They are still married. The girl grew up and started teaching at the same school he was a principal at. Everyone pretty much pretended it never happened and he never got in any trouble for it. Disgusting. We had a lot of cases of students who committed suicide because they couldn't withstand the stress from school that they had. But there is one case literally nobody speaks about. Two years ago a class went to a skyscraper with a smell cafe on its roof. Yes you can walk around on the roof. The only thing that stops you from falling off the edge is a 1.5 meters high fence. Some of the students started to play catch. Few minutes later everyone was looking at the girl about to die because she was one of the two who weren't caught yet. She literally just jumped off the edge and so many students got completely disturbed. The police handled it like it was just an accident but everyone knew it wasn't. Regular suicides. It's a small seaside town with maybe 5,000 residents. Yet every year we have people killing themselves, mostly men. One year, my son's homeroom class in primary school of 30 kids. Three had dads who had ended their lives. A common theme in though is people move here, hoping for a lifestyle change. Within a year they are broke. Their pizzeria or coffee shop or whatever business idea they hoped would sustain them is failing for lack of trade. Our tourist season is very short. They picture long beach walks and hiking in the hills. Problem is, rent, mortgage and other bills don't vanish because of pretty scenery. We even have a saying here about the scenery. You can't beat it and you can't eat it.